Everyone has different visions of what they want their iPhone to be. Mine is a bit different from most, but I figured you'd guys understand why I'm not planning on upgrading my iPhone 13 Pro Max in the event that I give you my dream scenario and you can realize how impossible it may be. Without further ado, here is my dream iPhone. Let's begin. It starts off early in the morning, say 3.27, and I look over to my right in bed. Tim Cook is staring right there, and he says, Good morning! I freak out. I scream for about 15 minutes as he calmly and collectively starts explaining to me that he has a surprise waiting for me in Cupertino. I explain to Tim it's a long drive, and I'm not really ready at this point in the morning considering I haven't freshened up yet. My makeup's not ready. Tim assures me that artificial intelligence will make my face look better on camera, and I agree to take a ride with him from my house to Apple's HQ, and we get inside a very magic mouse-looking Apple car. A car that does not have a steering wheel or pedals, just two very relaxing couches facing each other, so we recline, and we talk about how frustrating the side-loading app bill is on our three-hour drive. As the drive continues, we point out things on the side of our windows. Tim spots a deer, I spot some cows. There's a point where there's too many cows all next to each other, and the smell invades the interior of the vehicle, and it gets stinky. I tell Tim this was a big mistake. He assures me the wait will be worth it. As soon as we arrive to Apple HQ, he uses a combination of Touch ID and Face ID to get behind their R&D secured walls. I ask him why he doesn't want to put those two biometrics on a singular device, and he winks at me slowly, which makes me incredibly uncomfortable, but I am too interested to see what he has in store for me, so I continue inside the building. Once we finally get inside, we enter a completely white room with white walls, the entire seal is an LED light, so everything is incredibly bright, and a square table arises silently from the center of the room, and on top of this table is a black cloth covering some kind of glass large rectangle. Tim told me this is exactly what I've been waiting for, and that I would probably crap my pants as soon as he revealed that cloth. I told him he was being ridiculous, and then he pulls the apple-polished cloth made of chinchilla fur off of the glass rectangle. I instantly crap my pants and realized Tim was correct. It it is the perfect dream iPhone. No, I'm not talking about Dream the YouTubers. That iPhone would look rather weird, but I'm greeted by an entirely space gray titanium chassis all the way around the device. It contrasts so well with the black glass on the front and there are no visible signs of bezel or pixel. It's just black off display and I don't even see where the face ID sensors or camera sensors are. It's just a slab of glass that could not be more simple. I see one port on the bottom. That's right guys, in my dream scenario there's still actually a port because I've thought a lot about this and it turns out that having Thunderbolt on the iPhone would actually be immensely more helpful than going portless, and that's what this is. Thunderbolt 4 capability, which will plug in directly to my MacBook Pro, let my iPhone record high-resolution ProRes 4K at 60 video directly into my Final Cut Pro timeline, and of course, these camera sensors have been improved. We are still rocking an OLED display, except this time it's 240 hertz, and as soon as Tim Cook taps the front of this device, it becomes abundantly clear the war with bezels is now over. I don't see a single bezel on this thing, and I'm not just talking about notches or camera holes. I'm saying the pixels of the display go all the way right to the edge, touching the chassis. We don't know how Apple engineered this. We don't know what alien technology they used, but there is literally no bezel on this device. It's thinner than the Apple Watch Series 7 bezels. It's still flat on the front, but it is now curved on the back, and all of the grain in the titanium allows for a lightweight yet compact design that still has an incredibly large, rich display. It feels like the same form factor as my current 13 Pro Max, but because the bezels have been eliminated, we're talking about a 7-inch display that can still easily fit in my jeans pocket. I asked him what they did with the notch, and he told me that's where the answers stop. You just need to focus on what's in front of you right now, you idiot. And I quickly realized that they have now mastered the art of embedding Face ID sensors underneath the display, but thankfully, they have not replaced that empty screen real estate at the top of the device with the time, or the battery percentage, or the phone carrier name. No, instead, 
said it's still just as minimal as it was before. There's no purpose for the carrier name because Tim Cook also introduces me to their own Apple cellular service, which somehow mysteriously will never reference the terms 5G, even though it's probably using similar wavelengths. He tells me, for all of your hard work you've put into Telos of Tech, we are going to be offering you free cell phone coverage with unlimited data across all of your devices. Yes, even the MacBook Pro has 5G now. There are still volume buttons and side buttons, as Tim Cook decided that the perfect dream iPhone still needed a certain element of clickiness to it, but because they have beefed up the internals with this new titanium chassis and next generation water sealing technology, and the fact that they've removed the SIM card slot because Apple can just embed their own custom modems that work with their own custom carrier now, this new dream iPhone is water resistant up to 150 meters. I can literally scuba dive with this thing and film fish under the Puerto Rican beaches, and I don't have to worry about the speaker rattling, I don't have to worry about anything going wrong, and now of course on the back they've embedded a periscope lens and an extremely wide angle ultra wide lens, and of course the standard lens has improved immensely as well, to the point now that if you want to, because this is a 240 hertz display, you can actually record 4K video at 240 hertz. Why not 8K you may ask? Well that's because this is my dream scenario and 8K is kind of pointless because the resolution is so high you're not going to be able to notice the difference. Don't use that same argument against me with 240 hertz. I know it somewhat applies, but I'm the refresh rate guy, not the pixel density guy. So, 4K is the maximum. That's good. That's all you need. The periscope lens is capable of zooming in and retaining that 4K resolution at up to 50x. If we go further than 50x, it just becomes ridiculous and unnecessary. So, you can digital zoom past 50x if you want, but you can essentially see things that are insanely far away on your smartphone. All three lenses, of course, will have optical image stabilization, which works flawlessly. The battery life has somehow also been increased. I asked him how they do that, and he said, what did I already tell you about asking questions, Drew? If you keep these questions up, you're never gonna see the light of day again, and you're gonna remain in the white room. So I quickly remember Tim's advice, and I stop asking questions, but the battery life is now gonna last one week on a single charge, thanks to some graphene solid-state battery crap that is never gonna exist, but does exist in my dream. And the speaker quality is now double. The lower frequencies can be hit. It sounds as good as my 16-inch MacBook Pro speaker setup, despite being so much smaller. And yes, obviously, it still supports MagSafe wireless charging as well, if you're into that type of thing. The glass on the back of the phone is even harder and more scratch and crack resistant somehow, simultaneously. And it's a matte black, but it's still the darkest shade of black Apple could possibly find. They use some of that, like, super-duper rare ultra black paint to get this glass to that texture, and it looks insanely good with the gray titanium chassis. The display is insanely large with a high refresh rate, and with Thunderbolt connectivity, you can import footage and files directly to your MacBook insanely quick, not to mention record videos that go directly into the Final Cut timeline. Face ID is still present, it's just underneath the display, so you don't even have to think about there being a camera on the front. But yes, this camera also records 4K at 240 frames a second, and it supports center stage, because Apple decides that the 7-inch display form factor is big enough to warrant having center stage. So instead of asking Tim another question, I just say thank you so much for catering to everything I look for in a smartphone. I say thank you for even getting rid of the ringer switch despite everyone asking you to keep it. Tim Cook simply responds and says, yes, Drew, we know you didn't want the ringer switch, so we decided to get rid of it for you and make the perfect iPhone. I pick it up very quickly, I put it in my pocket, Tim Cook says something in Latin, and then I wake up. I realize this was a dream, although I'm slightly grateful Tim is not actually in my bed, and I realize that everything that I just imagined will probably never happen. And that's why I'm planning on keeping my iPhone 13 Pro Max for a couple more years. Until that exact scenario actually happens, maybe I'll consider upgrading in that case, but feel free to let me know all of your dream iPhone scenarios in the comments down below. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you all in the next one. Wow.